is up you guys welcome to margarita clock uh welcome back to my channel and this is also going to be a podcast so some of you are going to be listening to this which i have to keep in mind so i have to describe everything i can't just you know show you or use my hands which i typically do sometimes on podcasts but the feedback I've been getting, by the way, and the messages I've been getting on Instagram, via email, Facebook, all, all of the YouTube from you guys about the podcast, I really appreciate it. One in particular, you know who you are, and she was saying she was going through a really hard day, and she just put on the podcast and just listened to me talk to her, kind of like a friend, and that's really how I feel about the podcast. Like, she nailed it. That was why I created it, is just friends having Margarita O'Clock together. Margarita O'Clock, by the way, was, I don't know how it came to be on my Instagram stories, but you guys seem to love it. Instead of doing like a coffee talk every time, why not hang out and have a cocktail and talk about like the dirt and the stuff that you guys really want to know, like the juice. So before we jump into everything, before I answer a couple of you guys' questions about moving to Florida, um, building our house, moving away from Canada, like all that stuff, I wanted to take you guys through I know that this, these do not go hand in hand. We're gonna be talking about Disney and happiness and goals and then making margaritas. But I know you guys are gonna ask, how do you make your margarita? So it's a skinny margarita. I would love to figure out how to make it a bit spicy, but right now it is a smoky, skinny margarita. If we could add a bit of zest in there, maybe some jalapeno juice. I don't know how we would do that, but you guys tell me if you have any ideas. First thing I do is I grab a fishbowl glass that I got, I, I got it from FabFitFun. I think it's by Chic and Tonic. I will link it if I can. And one product that I just got off of Amazon that I'm obsessed with is like a bartender style rimming tool because I was going through so much salt because I would just use a plate. So I get a coarse sea salt, but it's a hickory smoked sea salt or an oak smoked sea salt. It's very specific, but listen, if you wanna know how I make my margarita, you gotta know. And I use that like little rimming tool. It's like a little container that opens up and I can put lime juice in there, I can put sugar. I don't think I would do that unless I'm making daiquiris or something. And I use the salt in there, so the salt stays in there. And we had a little debate on Instagram. Do you keep the sponge for the lime juice or do you get rid of it? So what I did is I washed it really, really well with really, really hot water and I just keep rotating it out. For today, I just used a fresh lime wedge. So I rim the glass, I grab a little stir stick, I dump some ice in there and I put a ton of lime juice, like a ton. So either use a full half a lime or a full lime if you want, or you can just buy lime juice, which is what I've been doing. So you can get that at your grocery store. And then I put in two ounces. Yes, two. Listen, if you want to do one, you can do one. I'm just telling you how I make it. I put in two ounces of mezcal. So not tequila. And listen, the guy at the liquor store thought I was crazy. He thought I was extra fancy. But I put in mezcal. And mezcal is like a smoky, it's meant to be sipped. It's like a fancy tequila. And I discovered it when we went to Greece and this was how they made margaritas and they won me over. So it has a smoky taste. Some have more smoky taste than others. So you gotta kind of vet your way through. You don't need a super expensive one. The one that I get is, it ranges between 45 and 55. There's some that go all the way up to 200. So you don't need an expensive one. I've actually bought in a pricier one. It wasn't as good. So the one that I got get is called like a Strombar. So, oh my gosh, I'm gonna butcher that. It's something like that. And then I put in just a splash of Ancho Chili Reyes liqueur. I used to use a full ounce or ounce and a half, not necessary. And that's what gives it a smoky taste as well. So Ancho Chili Reyes liqueur, mezcal, ice, lime juice. You don't need any margarita mixer that's packed with sugar. I used to put a little bit in, you don't need that. You can if you want to, but you don't need it. And that's kind of what makes it skinny is that the sugar isn't in there. And then I just fill it with a sparkling, either bubbly or La Croix, or today I use like a sparkling Dasani lime flavored drink. And then that's what I top it off with, which with a ton of ice, hence the fishbowl glass. And now we're ready for margarita o'clock. So if you want to pause me, go make that and come back and join me. You do you, boo. Let's talk. Let's talk about the stuff you guys want to know. I wish I actually had your questions in front of me, but I do know the majority of the questions, I just want it to be as transparent as I possibly can with still keeping some ounce of privacy for my husband and I um, and taking us through the process of this house build. So I feel like to share this story, I kind of have to like rewind a little bit. We have had this concept of building a house on Disney property for the past I would say six and a half to seven years. 
I remember the day that my husband came into my office and he was like, um, like our home office. <laughs> I don't have, I'm not that fancy. I don't have an office. So he came into my office and he goes, do you know that you can build a house? Like you can live in Disney? And I said, yeah, like celebration. And he said, no, it's, it's like on Disney property. It's called Golden Oak. And I said, oh, 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 tell me more. So from that point on, there wasn't even really that much images or inspiration or anything that I could really pull from just a logo. So I had the Golden Oak logo on my dream board for over a year before I really comprehended what it actually was and what these houses looked like. I just thought it was really cool. And my husband and I have always loved Disney. And by the way, it's not me that loved, loved Disney and dragged him to Disney. He actually brought me for one of our first trips together back in like 2007. And then we started going almost every single year and we just love it. Like it's, it's a really fun place to go as a couple. I will tell you that. So those of you that get me, you get me. So we knew we love Disney. We love the company. They do everything above and beyond. So to have a house there would be like a dream. So it was like a massive dream, big goal basically. And so I started Pinteresting and it started to come up on Pinterest. There were certain houses, like I guess like the dream homes and the model homes that they would start to put up on Pinterest or just previous builders had put them up on Pinterest. So I had a couple pictures. I remember I had a picture of like a beautiful ensuite with a huge huge massive tub in the middle of a fireplace that was leading out to a pool like it was ridiculous and I had another one that was looking over it was like a two-story situation of a living room and you could see the, the the what the heck is it called the big a courtyard oh my goodness and I studied architecture Angie so a little courtyard style and a lot of the houses had this, I guess, for privacy. So the house was built around and then they had these great big pools in the middle. Amazing. So that's what I had on my vision board for a really long time. And then I had these bronze statues that were on the website and I didn't really understand even what they were, but they were like Disney characters out of bronze. And I was like, well, that represents Golden Oak. Not sure how, but it does. And I had talked about it after that a couple times on my channel about how this is, you know, a goal that we have. And I think I was sharing how I made my vision board. I think that's what it was is like, this is a big dream that we have, you know, 10 years down the road, we'll see. And the houses back then were starting at, I think 2 million. And that was like a pie in the sky goal. And of course being Disney, Disney dirt, as, as we were told, Disney dirt, the price goes up. So the longer that we waited and not waited, but just how do you make that happen? So the longer that it, what time went on, prices went up. And so now the houses are, I think they start at just under, just under 3 million and they range all the way to like monster mansions that are like 17,000 square feet. Like these are huge from 3000, probably around 3000 to be like the smallest ones to 17,000. Like, and there's all different types of homes. So it was a, it literally, I don't want to say a pie in the sky goal because it was always our North star. It was the one thing that we wanted, but we just didn't know how we were going to do it. And you know, I think I really believe in the law of attraction. I believe in working though towards the law of attraction. I was just hoping that stuff is going to happen. But, and when opportunities rise, you say yes. So I got an email one day from a girl called Kaylee and she followed me on YouTube. So Kaylee, if you're watching, you're awesome. And she just said, you know, I'm interning and I might have an opportunity for you to come see houses at Golden Oak. If you want to come see on your next trip, when are you available? And I said, well, we're actually going in like a month. And so this was last, not last year, the year before in May. So fairly recent, like a year and a half ago. And I said, yeah, but just know like this is a five to 10 year goal. Like I really don't want to be those people that go and look at dream homes and you guys get your hopes up. Like we're not buying a house. And I remember sitting down with Andre and we talked about it and he said, do you want to go? And I said, yeah, like we should. But I said, and I remember exactly where we were. And I said, but this makes it real. And this is going to take, I wasn't, so, I didn't think I was going to get emotional. It's just a lot because it's like, anyways, we're not going to get emotional. It's not one of those stories but I just remember like every step along the way. And I said, it's, it's real now. If we see it, it's real. And it's going to go from a five to 10 year goal to like a two year goal because I know us and I know how we are. And when you see it in front of you, it's now real. And 
I so believe in that, by the way. Like if you have a goal that you want to achieve, if there's a place where you want to live, go vacation there. Go look at it. Go stay at a hotel nearby. If that like if you have a dream home, like if you want to have a dream home, I don't know, next to the ocean, go stay at a hotel nearby that's on the ocean. Like put yourself in that space because you don't end up somewhere where you don't belong and where you don't feel like you don't belong. And for me, like I felt like I belonged there. Like I had spent so much time there that I just felt a sense of being drawn to that space. So when you feel drawn, I guess it just can naturally happen that way. And I know that might sound hokey, but it's, it's the truth. And it's not the margarita talking. So we went, we went to Disney. It was in May. It was, that was probably my favorite Disney vacation to date. Andre and I still talk about it. We went for 10 full days. We were completely alone. Sometimes we bring our coaches with us. That's why I say that. Sometimes a little bit of not work because they're like our top coaches, but still it's like a little bit of work, some friends, or sometimes Andre's parents will come. And you know, sometimes we've met up with friends too in Orlando. So this trip was like 10 days straight, just me and him with a little sprinkle of our first time in Golden Oak. And I, <laughs> oh my God, can't wait to read this up. I had actually filmed a video while I was there. It's still on my channel. It was a big no-no. I didn't know. I had asked permission. I was told I could do it. Uh, and I probably wasn't supposed to because I don't know if you guys know this. My video is the only video that is like a normal civilian that is filming beyond the gates. So kind of weird, but I did it. And look, I became, I became an owner, so it's okay. So we went and we toured a bunch of houses. We met some amazing people, people that I still talk to this day that are residents that I look up to so much. And I don't know if they'll ever know how much of an impact they had on Andre and I, like just in terms of just their drive and like the way that they spoke and how they were. And even just thinking like, thinking about the people that we would be friends with in this neighborhood that truly get us, that are just like-minded, that like I said, they would just get us. And that it was just really cool to be around people like that and to get a glimpse of that. And it was neat because you go through the main gates and it's so secure, it's so safe. You have to go through, no matter which neighborhood you live in, and I'll explain that in a second, you have to go through two gates to get to your house, which I love. I am all about that. I don't like uninvited guests. I'm all about that life. So I always told Andre, I was like, I will either live like in my old age in like a castle in the middle of nowhere or somewhere that has like a bazillion gates because I just, I want to be left alone. And that's what it, it was just so friendly, but so secure. And so if you don't know where this is, by the way, it's about, I don't know, I'm trying to think like a 30 to 45 minute walk to the Wilderness Lodge. So you're very close to Magic Kingdom. Like you're very close, seven, seven to five minute drive to Disney Springs, cause we did it. So you pull up to the main gates and it's where the Four Seasons is at Disney World. So it's in the same neighborhood. So part of Golden Oak is the Four Seasons residence. But what's cool is part of Golden Oak is all these little burrows. I don't know. I call them burrows. I have no idea. And they all have their own name. There's like the Kingswell burrow or neighborhood. That's like, those are like the big lots and like the big, big houses. And there's Carrollwood. I love Carrollwood. It's like the really, really, I don't know. I feel like the more established, bigger houses that are like super fancy. Um, there's Symphony Grove, which is like the newer part of it. There is Kimball Trace, which is like the oldest, oldest. That was the original. It's actually shaped like Mickey. And the main hub of it, the one that if you know anything about Golden Oak, you probably know Marceline. That's the biggest borough. And those are the most, I feel, normal houses, <laughs> like normal shaped houses. And I just mean in terms of size, like some are smaller, some are bigger. They just, they're more standard. And at the main hub of it is called the summer house. And that's basically like, I guess your clubhouse you'd call it. So there's a pool there, there's restaurants. It's very cool. So we met the realtors at the Four Seasons and they took us around. We went and visited a bunch of houses and it was so overwhelming. Like I was looking back at the footage and the audio on the footage. And all I was saying the whole time was like, this is a lot, this is overwhelming because everything in these houses is, pretty much 100% custom. It's like whatever the person wanted from like a Mickey shaped statue to like Mickey details and the railings and like just anything. It's not just like Mickey stuff. And I hate that question. If you've ever asked her, I'm really sorry that I'm saying this, but I hate that question that people ask me like, so is it like a Mickey Mouse shaped house? I'm like, no, 
it's, it's like, it's, we just value the company of Disney. Like we don't need characters hanging from the roof. If you want that, you can. And I'm sure that there's some people in the neighborhood that have that, but it's not just being like a Disney nerd. It's just the idea of having quality, having a quality home. So we really saw that when we went through the neighborhood and we checked out all the different boroughs and we had a little, a little snack at the summer house and we just really got to see everything. And it just, like I said, it made it freaking real. And that night we ate at the restaurant at the Four Seasons on the rooftop. It's called Kappa. It's one of my favorite restaurants in Disney. It's amazing. It's like a Spanish fusion restaurant. And you can see the fireworks from, obviously, you can see the fireworks of pretty much all the parks of, all, no, not pretty much all the parks from that restaurant. It's a beautiful restaurant. And that night, we were on cloud nine. They had sent us home with like this booklet and we were sitting there. Andre had a Negroni, I had a martini. And I remember just, we looked at each other and we were like, so it's happening because it's, you see it, it's tangible, it's real. It's like, how do we drive towards this? And how do we work our asses off to make this happen? Sorry, language, but how do we do it? And so we got to work like hardcore and we both work our own business together and we have for a couple of years now, and we knew that it was gonna take a ton of growth in our business. We knew that it was gonna take a ton of sacrifice, but more so just focus. And I will tell you, there were days that, like I remember one day in particular, and I'm sharing this because it might happen to you with, if you have a goal. We were walking back, we had gone to a restaurant nearby, like in Little Italy, and we're walking back. And I don't know what triggered me. I think something happened in our business that I just, I was disappointed. And I just looked at him, I said, we're never gonna get this freaking house in Disney. Like it's not happening. And what was happening too is we started to kind of zero in on what we wanted. We started to figure out like I had, I, and I really had this feeling like every time we, would, we, we had a lot of meetings after that, by the way, we would go to the neighborhood to check out more houses. And I just want to say like the team at Disney were so freaking accommodating. Like we're actually friends with some of them now, but they were so accommodating, never with the feeling of like, these people need to buy. Like I never felt pressured and I never felt like they were disappointed. I never felt like they treated us like we were tire kickers just because we were young. They have, they have like all ranges of people, by the way, in this neighborhood, like they have young, young humans, like younger than Andre and I, not that we're that young, but they have like people in their twenties to people in seventies and eighties. So it's a full range, but they never treated us like, oh, they're kids. There's no way they can afford this. They really gave us the time of day. And I, I really thought that that was something just amazing and they truly cared like they really really cared so we went back quite a few times and every time like towards the, in the beginning i was like it's just not quite what i want like it's just it's not quite that and i really and andre did too like we really had a vision for what we wanted and so we went back last january january 4th we drove from fort lauderdale and we were in the sales room or the sales center or whatever you call it, like it's in the neighborhood. And we're looking at basically like an aerial model of the whole neighborhood. And the, the realtor basically goes, okay, so we're building like this newer area here. And she said a word that just like triggered me. And she said cottages and I was like, yes. You know, it's funny, Andre thought the opposite. He was like, uh, I don't want a cottage. And I thought, no, that's perfect because I want it to be unique. I want to pack a punch. I want it to be really special. And she, she mentioned something. She said, there's coastal cottages. And I thought, that's what I want. That's, that's really what we've always, we wanted like a beach style kind of house, like a Florida beach style, Nantucket style. And that was really like, that really, really spoke to us. So I thought when she was saying that, that it was already built because it had been a little minute since we had been there and you know, Disney, like how quick they're at building stuff. So we went down that road and nothing was there yet, but just seeing it and kind of seeing how there was like a water area and there was going to be like a privacy wall and it wasn't facing any other house. There's just like all these different things. And I was like, that's where it's going to be. And I had a feeling and it, it, I felt so certain, but let me just take you through, like, just like we had moments of doubt, we had moments of kind of going off path. So 
what we started to do before we had landed on that final decision, because we were starting to get discouraged. We were like, well, maybe our money can take us further off property. And maybe this can be a transition and maybe we can just get something somewhere else. So we started looking in Windermere. Um, we looked in Winter Park. We looked in Dr. Phillips. We looked in Lake Nona. We, lo we looked everywhere in Orlando. And even, even places like right nearby. And we thought we had found one. Like there was one that we really, really liked. But it wasn't it didn't give us the warm fuzzies like we knew it'd be a project it didn't give us the warm fuzzies but most of all i think we both knew that we were going off course like it, it's not what we wanted so we just weren't ex we were excited but we weren't ah and so out of the blue we were going to visit that house and the realtor just said do you want to just stop by golden oak one more time and we said yeah like we kind of gave her the whole like don't bother but sure and driving back into Golden Oak that day, coming from the other house, and this isn't any, that house was beautiful, and that neighborhood was gated, and it was beautiful, but it wasn't the original goal. It wasn't what we wanted. So driving back into Disney that day, and of course it was Christmas time, and they were all decorated, so it was like, they had my heart right at the beginning. And we drove in, and I just thought, this is where we're meant to be. And we were just, we were so pulled there. Like, I don't know how else to explain it. So we went to visit a house, didn't weren't was not interested in that house at all it was like a spanish style house not i i don't know why i don't love spanish style houses no offense to anybody just it's not my style and it wasn't really what we loved but we still could see, like the level of quality and we could just see it and we just thought like why do we keep looking elsewhere like why do we keep deviating just stay the course however long it needs to take just stay the course and that was the day and they said i think there's something that you guys might like and i just thought that is what we want. So fast forward a little bit. So we actively worked. We knew exactly which lot we wanted. We were going to build. But the trick was we had to figure out how to get that lot before the builder bought the lot and that the builder would build a house on it because it's Disney. They want it up. They want it done. They're going to they're going to complete the neighborhood and it's, it's a done deal. Right. So you were, we felt kind of on a time crunch, but not in a stressful way. In a you know, this could push us to be our the best thing we've ever done basically to push us beyond our limits but in a good way and we knew that and i'm telling you like we still joke about it to this day we have never worked so hard in our freaking lives like the amount of speed at which we were working it was i i don't even think it was human and i remember the day that we got the text that they said someone else is looking at your lot and they they're pretty serious and i i went inside to andre and i just felt so discouraged and i was like if it goes there's nothing else that I want that's there. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to do. And we just, we put our heads down and we did all that we could. And that was just getting to work, just making it happen so that we could put that down payment on the lot. And what's cool at Disney is when they, when they start a project with you, it's seen through all the way through. So you're not just gonna sit on an empty lot is what I'm saying. So once the project starts, the train has started and you have to get going. So the lot has been purchased. That's why I kind of kept it a secret until we went to visit it this past trip. And when Andre and I took that picture on the lot because I don't know, things can fall through, things can happen. I, I also, also privacy a little bit. Like I'm not that private. I share a lot on social media, but it's still our house, right? And it's still some form of privacy. And so we went and to be able to stand on like the dirt, the Disney dirt that we have, that we can call our own in our future home is insane. Like it's absolutely, it's ridiculous. It's very overwhelming. Even though we were just standing on like an empty lot, I've, I felt like overwhelmed with emotions. And I do not even know what's gonna happen the day that, so the way that it works with Disney, especially us living here and going to visit every once in a while, they'll basically do, not an unveiling, but we're gonna go one day and it's gonna be done and we're gonna turn the key. They called it like a turnkey service where like you walk in and it's completed. Like this is how they described it. The light bulbs will be all in the in the lampshades and like everything's gonna be ready for you. I will hit the freaking floor. I'm gonna be a disaster. Like I will be wearing zero makeup for that moment and it'll probably never see social media because it's gonna be such a special emotional moment. But like thinking of that is so overwhelming because it's just, 
it's crazy that it's it's happening. So to answer the question, we're not moving. We it is very very difficult for two Canadian residences to become American and to completely make the break. And also, I'll be honest, a little bit scary to just cut ties and move. So we can we could do, you know, we've looked into everything where you could be dual citizens, you could get your green card and go there temporarily. Like we've we've looked at everything, we're working through it. Um, but right now the best option is for us to remain Canadian, keep our house. We love our house, honestly, we love it. And we still love the fall. We hate the winter and it's coming, but we love the summer. Um, I love our pool. So we we have solutions and we're working through it, but we're not moving permanently. Like we're not gonna be in Florida all the time. It will be a vacation home. And because it's a reasonable size, you know, I talked to you about like the mansions that are in there. It's not one of the mansions, um, but it's still a dream come. It's insane. And it's so us, it's so us. It's like the most perfect thing. So I shared a little bit on IG stories of just going through and being at the design center and working with the Disney team, like the builders and the architects and the designers are like amazing. Like we got to go through the design center and they were working on some of the, um, the model homes and just what's going in there. They have like my dream job. It is the coolest, coolest thing what they get to do. And they pretty much told us like sky's the limit. Like you can do whatever you want. So taking it to a whole other level, like literally going through Pinterest and be like, okay, how creative can I get? And just thinking of how to do little classy Disney touches in the house to just what do we want the overall vibe of our house to be? What do we want, you know, the master ensuite to look like? Like for me, our master bedroom slash ensuite with the tub and all that, like the vibes of that is so important to us. Um, both of the spare bedrooms, two of the spare bedrooms will be offices as well as like a film, like I'm gonna do a filming room like this until and if we have kids, then sure. Um, and then we have another spare bedroom for actual guests, which is different than this house because we don't even have a guest bedroom in this house if you guys have ever seen a house tour. So it's very cool. No gym in that house because there's a gym at the summer house. It's gonna be a total different lifestyle. Like it's just a, it's just a complete shift in how we live here. We're gonna be way more social I think we're going to, you know, they put together events as a community. They do like excursions and shopping outings. And I, of course I bring up shopping outings. They have like, they have a freaking, like, so we're already starting to get the emails cause we're technically residents and they're doing a pumpkin patch. And I'm like, I love them so much. Like they're so just Disney. Like I don't know how else to explain it. I know that I'm nerding out right now, but it's amazing. So on our next trip, Andre and I are actually gonna go for dinner at the summer house one night and just get to live like residents for a night just a little bit early so it's cool now i sh so like i said i was sharing my vision boards on instagram and a lot of you guys were asking questions a lot of you were saying like can you share more of this and can you tell us the process the process is basically that we're building a dream home with the people that invented how to dream like they know how to do it and they can play at any level. So if you want, you know, like a limestone Mickey, you can do that. If you want just little subtle touches, they can do that. If you want a slide in your house, you can do that. If you Google it, you'll see it. Um, or if you YouTube it, you'll see it. But they can, the sky really is the limit. So they took us through a couple houses this past trip, just the builder did just to show us like, these are some ideas and it was on my Instagram, just some little touches. And for the privacy of the people that had the house, I just did like the little, little touches. And so special. So I just started thinking, okay, I'm gonna take like what I learned in school. So I basically just created all of these different mood boards and slash vision boards, I guess you would say, just so that, not so that it would be exactly what we wanted, just so that the designers and the architect and the builder could see and understand what was in our head. So we created about five of these and I'll share them, but what they were was just going through the exterior areas like the pool and what we wanted for that and how you know just a little touch of like a mickey shrub pushed into the rest of the greenery would be like a cute little touch like a hidden mickey or some little um we, want, we saw this in greece how they had like fiber optics at the bottom of their pool and just looked like little stars like that type of stuff um a perfect example too was the front porch area I was thinking you know wouldn't it be nice to have a little Disney touch of maybe like a gas lit lantern because that kind of goes with like the idea of like the Nantucket cottage style and maybe having as though like Tinkerbell was in there 
like a real like a, a real Tinkerbell lantern, like those kind of touches. Um, and then like in the house looking at, we're obsessed. I, I, obviously you guys must know, if you guys have seen any ounce of our house here, you know that we love Restoration Hardware, but Restoration Hardware's came out with like a beach house collection and pulling like inspiration from that and really looking at like a Florida style beach house and like a coastal Cape Cod style cottage and those types of ideas. And what do I want as an office? Like this would never go in Florida, like a matte black, especially with the house that we're doing. So I would probably do like an all white situation with um, shiplap and like that's what I started to pull and just really kind of taking the ideas that I had in my head and putting them on paper. And I honestly sending that over, I didn't know if I would get backlash of how rude, like you're not giving us, you know, all of your trust or do you have faith in us or whatnot, or like this is our project and we're taking it. It was like, they literally said, you guys are some of the most organized clients we've ever had, thank you. like. That's the level of class I feel like we're dealing with. And they're just, they're so kind. And I never want to step on their toes. Like they're the pros, right? But I think that us sharing our vision, especially for our dream home is so important. I just, I feel so lucky that Andre and I can just be completely transparent with them. And if we don't like something they proposed, like we didn't really love the, like thinking about it after our meeting, we didn't really love the glass tile on the fireplace in the main, in the main living space. So we just said, you know what? Can we do like stone so that it's more, rustic and they said yeah like of, co of course you can it's just very cool that you can work with people that are just so creative and that have the outlet and the capacity to be that creative it's just it's amazing and it honestly i just feel like my little this little student in me is so just enamored excited i feel like more creative if that makes sense to be able to be a part of all of it and it's just a really cool experience that I hope that we can share like every step of the way. I'm trying to share as much as I possibly can with you guys today and share all the nitty gritty details. But other than that, that's pretty much everything to date other than we're going back in about a month and we're going to do the first groundbreaking. So the way that Disney does it is it's like a ceremonial groundbreaking. And this is how they told us. They're like, well, if you want to come back, you don't have to but some people do like a groundbreaking ceremony and we basically have like, I think they said like gold shovels and champagne and they're like, no promises if Mickey shows up. I was like, Mickey doesn't have to show up and we'll basically do like a ceremony groundbreaking. So I'll take pictures of that. It's just very cool to be able to, to I don't know, to be able to see such a crazy once upon a time pie in the sky goal come to life. Like it's very crazy. So if I seem a bit perplexed, that's why, because trying to wrap my head around this is just, it's a lot. And oh, the last thing that I want to share. So when we first went to the neighborhood, they had said, you know, we're, we're about, we're, we're this far from Magic Kingdom. And I thought, oh, wow. Okay. Like we're actually close. Our house will be one of the few houses and they keep saying no guarantees. I would never be mad if it didn't happen, but it's, it's just a cool thing. Our house will be one of the houses that you can actually watch the fireworks from dead. Like stop it. I just, I think it's, it's just such another level. Like, I don't know how else to explain it. And I know that there's not going to be, you know, 100% of the people that are watching this that get it, nor are happy, nor agree, which is totally fine. I think that that's why it's such a small, you know, exclusive neighborhood is there's very few crazies that would want to be a part of something like that. And I want to hang out with those crazies. So I love it. I'm excited for it. Um, but to answer the big question, we're not moving away. We're not packing up our stuff. And if anything, when we go, it'll actually be easier for us to keep Carl here. He has a full-time sitter and he loves her. Oh my gosh, almost more than me. And he will be just, he'll be better to be here instead of traveling him back and forth. Cause I doubt that that little guy would be a good flyer. So <laughs> we'll wait until we're permanent to bring him full time and we'll save the neighbors over there their fingers, but it'll be cool. It'll almost be like living a little bit of a double life. We'll have our Florida life and we'll have our Ottawa life. So very cool. I hope that this answered some of your questions. I hope that more than anything, it just inspires you to dream a little bit bigger. You know, if you, there's something right now that you're like, oh my God, that's such a pie in the sky goal. Maybe not. Like, how can you just get like a little, little bit closer to it, make it real, make it tangible and you might be closer than you think. So I hope that we can be some form of inspiration for you guys to just keep working, keep pedaling. Don't, you know, don't stop. Like don't 
don't doubt yourself. Even if you have moments of doubt, don't stop. It's normal to have doubts. It's totally normal to have moments of like total breakdown and freaking out and being like, oh my gosh, will this ever happen? Getting impatient, I get it. I totally get it. But I think it's most about don't lose faith. Like there's always a way you will figure it out. You will do it and just believe. Dream big and believe in yourself. So I hope you guys enjoyed our margarita clock. I certainly did. I'm gonna go edit more videos. That's <laughs> my life this month is editing videos. I will definitely be filming a routine video. I'll do a morning routine, nighttime routine with what twist I do not know. Maybe like a cozy fall morning routine, like how I'm actually waking up. The, also, maybe also like how I'm waking up early. Cause I've been waking up at, this morning I woke up at four, oh my gosh, my sunrise alarm clock went off at four. It was supposed to go off at 4.50 and it went off at four. So it slowly woke me up and I slept in till 4.50 and then I got up. So I've been waking up for like five, like downstairs at five, doing my workout. My workout right now is insane. Like I feel like I'm back to my insanity roots. So I, almost, I wanna share that with you guys, like how I'm doing, like I often get asked that question. How is it possible that you are filming YouTube videos every single day. You all, this is like, I'm not a YouTuber. This isn't my business. I am a coach full time with my husband. So how do you have time to be a YouTuber full time, still get your workout in and not go crazy? Well, waking up before the sunrise and before most humans definitely helps. And it's not always easy, but I told Andre today one thing, and this kind of goes hand in hand with what we've just been talking about with pushing for goals. But I told Andre today, like what I went through today and putting up my video, I feel like most people would have given up like three hours in and I kept going. I didn't move from my chair. I had like my slippers, my little, my little um, blue light glasses on and my hair up in a bun with like coconut oil in it. I looked haggard, two cups of coffee deep. And I was there, I was at that chair from 6 a.m. till 2.30, I didn't move, it was, it was a lot. I almost cried. I talked myself off the ledge. Like, that's what I mean. Like when it, when it gets hard, just like you can do it and it will be worth it. And you have to know that. So I hope that this inspired you guys. I'm always here for you. If you have questions, um, any curious questions about this, I'm here to answer everything that I possibly can so far. I don't know everything so far, but we will share our experience and comment down below. If you guys have any questions, give this video a thumbs up. If you guys love the house stuff. I love sharing all the decor and the home stuff and the Disney-ness and just the, the love. I love it. So we will continue with our daily videos. I hope that you guys are subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications so you can know when they go up because they're going up every day, but they don't always go up at the same time because listen, like today I hit a snafu, didn't know when the video was going to go up, but make sure that you're subscribed. And if you guys aren't um, subscribed to the podcast yet, go, go subscribe. There's always different stuff on there. It's not always what's on YouTube. It's not cut and dry. Um, sometimes I switch it up. Sometimes I just sit down and I talk to you guys. So if you guys want to see more podcasts, let me know as well in the comments below. Make sure that you guys are following on Instagram for the daily stories because I'm on there every freaking day and I answer every single one of my DMs as well as the comments on YouTube. So make sure that you guys are checking in with me if you have questions. I'm always here for you and I hope that you truly enjoyed our margarita clock. I loved hanging out with you guys. This was so much cooler than a coffee talk. And I hope that I really do, like I know I've, this is like probably my third time saying it, but I really do hope that this could inspire you to dream bigger, set a goal and get after it. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. I always say next time, but tomorrow. Bye.